I'm Brittany Luby. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of History at the University of Guelph. I did my undergrad at Queens in Kingston, and I did my degree in English and History. I moved on to York University in Toronto for my master's degree. And then I did a stint at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. And when I completed my comprehensive exams, Ontario has my heart, so I moved back to complete my PhD with York. History and I have a complex relationship. So um, I always feel a little bit, oh, I always feel a little bit funny when I tell my students that I pursued history not because I love it, uh, but because for the longest time it made me very angry. Um, so when I was going through school, uh, you know, you go, you go into the classroom and you'd have these super phenomenal teachers who wanted to tell you all about the development of Canada. And, you know, I left Canada was formed in 1867, for example, and then I'd go home and my parents would ask me, what'd you learn today? And I was like, oh, Canada was formed in 1867. And, Mom and dad would be like, well, you know, you might want to put that date on for your test, but, you know, uh, people were living here uh, much, much longer. Then dad would load us up in the boat and drive us out to check out pictographs on, on Lake of the Woods and show us that people had been living in the Kenora region for, for thousands of years. Dad would put us in the boat and uh, drive us out to the pictographs on, on Lake of the Woods and remind us or, or reteach us that, that people had been living uh, on the Lake of the Woods area for, for thousands of years. And so I, I didn't have a real love for history, but my parents taught me that if you want to change something, sometimes the best way to change it is to be on the inside where you have a voice and, and you can make an impact. So if I wanted to change the textbooks, I needed to be one of the people writing the textbooks. <laughs> and uh, to be one of the people writing the textbooks, uh, I learned that you might need a graduate degree and you might need a PhD and uh, here I am. I think one of the other things that I find really incredible about the University of Guelph is the openness of the people I work with to, uh, to hearing new ideas and to allowing me to be my creative self. So, um, you know, I've received an absolute ton of support for uh, creative teaching in the classroom. Um, and for creative historical production. So in addition to working on my book monograph and more traditional articles, I was able to work with an incredible team. So Kim Anderson, Kara Waycamp, Maria Shallard, and approximately 40 student volunteers to produce aerial photography to teach about missing and murdered Indigenous women. And so I guess I really feel that Guelph gives me the freedom and the support to experiment and uh, to push for radical change. So I have, uh, I guess, three prongs in my current research. So as a uh, traditional academic historian, uh, I work on hydroelectric development in the Treaty No. 3 district, which is in northwestern Ontario and southeastern Manitoba. And I'm really interested in learning how Anishinaabe communities responded creatively to uh, these hydroelectric generating uh, stations to keep the nation alive and their families uh, alive in their, in their territories. Um, for me, it's really a study of, of sovereignty. How do we live our sovereignty on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, and then uh, in my art stream, I'm really excited to be working with the Guelph Civic Museum and uh, with Chelsea and, and Kim and Kara moving forward to uh, to produce a, an exhibit to continue raising awareness about Indigenous women. So that's an opportunity for us to use art and visuals to speak uh, to a much wider audience. Um, and then my third prong is children's literature. So um, I've developed a love uh, for history despite my rocky start with it. <laughs> And uh, now I want to make sure that I'm sharing stories, uh, important stories, uh, about how uh, our nations have, have interacted. So I'm writing Indigenous history for, for young ones now, picture books. And that people feel afraid of pursuing their humanities uh, in the midst of an economic downturn. Um, and I understand that it can be really scary when you get asked questions like, what are you going to do with a history degree? Or what are you going to do with that philosophy uh, major? But humanities teach us to, to think critically and 
to question the normal. And so I think when we're pursuing a humanities degree, when someone asks, well, you know, what are you going to do with that? It, it's an opportunity for us to say, why is that the most important question for you to ask me? Um, and to really dig deep and decide what we want to be and how we want to make an impact in the world um, and to, to find our own way to be, I think, our best selves.